To fill up the fresh water tank on your retro RV, just unlock the water cap, which is located behind the driver's door. It has a 40 litre tank, so you will have plenty of fresh water for your trip. To drain the grey water tank, there is a tap under the vehicle behind the driver's front wheel. You will need to connect the drain hose provided and then turn the tap on to empty the grey water tank. When looking at the dashboard, you will see that there are a few lights and gauges. The first light is the engine light. If the engine light does turn on, it will shine orange and a buzzer will sound at the same time. If you hear this buzzer or see the engine light come on, you must pull over immediately as this is letting you know that the engine coolant level is low. After pulling over, you should call roadside assistance or the franchisee you hired the van from. Next is the engine temperature gauge. The normal operating temperature is between 180 and 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 90 to 95 degrees Celsius, depending on which gauge your retro RV has. If the gauge reads higher than 205 degrees Fahrenheit or higher than 100 degrees Celsius, you must pull over immediately and turn off the engine. After pulling over, you should call roadside assistance or the franchisee you hired the van from. Next is the battery light. The light will shine red when you first turn the ignition on and then it should turn off when the engine is running. Likewise with the oil light. The oil light will also shine red when the ignition is on and then turn off when the engine is running. If either of these two lights come on when the engine is running, it's letting you know there's a fault. If the battery light comes on, it's indicating that the alternator is not charging the battery. And if the oil light comes on, you must pull over immediately, as it's indicating low oil pressure to the engine. After pulling over, you should call roadside assistance or the franchisee you hired the van from. Towards the bottom of the dash, we have the hazard lights, windscreen wipers, washers, demister and horn. Next to the personal entry door, there is a fire extinguisher and above that is a hinge table and smoke detector. Off to the side, there are two switches. One switch is for the cabin lights on the ceiling and the other switch is for the exterior awning light. In the kitchen, under the sink, there is a switch at the top to turn on the water pump, which gives water pressure to the kitchen tap. On the right-hand side of the kitchen, we have a power point. For this to work, you will need to connect your RV to 240 volts shore power this is explained a little later in this video. Alternatively, if your vehicle is fitted with an inverter, it will work at all times, as long as the inverter is switched on. There is also a USB port mounted next to the power point that works at all times. Under the overhead cupboard, you will see that there are lights. The switch for these is on the right-hand side. Under the seat, next to the bed, there is a storage compartment. In this storage compartment, you'll see a battery. This battery runs and starts the vehicle. To the right, you will see that there is another compartment. This battery is the auxiliary battery, which runs the fridge, USB ports and lights. On the right is the Red Arc battery charger. You will need to read the Red Arc user manual to understand how this operates. This power point, like the one in the kitchen, only works when connected to 240 volts shore power or if an inverter is hooked up to the vehicle. For more information on fuses, you will need to refer to the user manual to see the fuse box layouts. As you can see, there is a Subaru key installed. This key must remain in the ignition for the vehicle to start. If you remove the key, it will act as an immobiliser, so for the engine to start, make sure the Subaru key is in place. the kitchen bench is the fridge. You will know that the fridge has power if the internal light is on when you open the door. When the dial is on zero, although the light is still on, the cooling system is off. So when keeping food cool, make sure to have the fridge dial between one and seven, seven being the colder setting. In the engine compartment, you will see the spare tyre and storage drawer. In the storage drawer, there are a few different items. In this black box, there is a 12-volt jack and a rattle gun. For your safety, 
we strongly recommend you have tyres changed by roadside assistance because it can become quite dangerous if the wheel nuts are not tightened correctly. Looking inside the engine bay, you will see a few items. The first thing we will focus on is the dipstick, which is the yellow tube in front. The yellow cap next to it is the oil cap. This is where you will fill the engine oil and check the oil level. To the top right, you will see the coolant expansion tank. If the coolant ever drops below the level of the red wire, the check engine light and buzzer will be activated. If this occurs, you must pull over immediately. At the rear right hand side of the engine compartment there is an Anderson plug. To charge the auxiliary battery simply plug your solar panel into this plug. Next to this Anderson plug there are two circuit breakers. These are two 40 volt circuit breakers for the air conditioner and power points. Below the circuit breakers is the 15 amp power inlet. This allows you to connect to 240 volts shore power to the retro RV. Thanks for your time and we hope you enjoy your adventures in your retro RV.